Greetings, Cyberdogs and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog coming at you from the Renstar space platform in this Let's Play Minecraft Feed the Beast series. In the previous episode, we were constructing and installing our very first nuclear reactor. And in this episode, my friends, we are going to be taking the necessary steps to make that reactor core as safe as freaking possible. So sit back and relax, my cyber diggity dogs. Let's feed the beast. That is our mind. And speaking about feeding, man, I need a sip of this tasty ass beverage. Give me one second. Mmm. Damn, man, I'm in such a good mood today, guys. Cannot wait to play some Feed the Beast with you guys. And since you were last with me in the Renstar, I have been one busy-ass Cyberdog. As you can see, I have installed those awesome inverted lights underneath all of the corridors. And as you can see, it just looks so freaking sweet, man. It, it really does look like a spaceship corridor now, which is absolutely epic. And as we go outside into the outer corridor too, um, I've basically finished off this corridor over here to have a look at what it would look like. And as you can see, guys, it is looking freaking freaking pimp mcdaddy now a ton of you guys have been giving me such excellent freaking advice um, in the previous episode uh, about nuclear reactors and more importantly about how to make nuclear reactors 100 safe now let me try and explain exactly what would go down in chinatown should this nuclear reactor behind me overheat and explode it would literally take out this entire module of the Renstar that we have worked so hard to build. And it would probably take out a good section of Rentown or so. The explosion is absolutely freaking massive. And that is why, guys, it is absolutely imperative that we secure the health and safety of this nuclear reactor chamber before we even think about turning it on or generating even one freaking EU from this machine. And that is why I have got my full set of armor on, guys. I've got my full set of nano suit armor on uh, no idea if that would actually stop me dying from a nuclear explosion but it's as close to a rad suit as i can get one of you guys suggested that i should uh, i should put on a, ra a rad suit asap so i got my rad suit on and there are two more very important safety precautions that we can take in feed the beast to secure the safety of our nuclear reactor the very first thing that we can do is use something called reinforced stone and reinforced glass to create a blast proof chamber around the reactor core itself and that is exactly what this sweet ass looking block is over here this is reinforced stone and what I think we should do, and as you can see, I've already started the process. I think we should create a reinforced stone chamber around each of our nuclear reactors. And this was a suggestion made by one of you guys. I don't think that this uh, stone, this reinforced stone stops the explosion completely, but I do believe that it absorbs a good amount of the explosion so that um, any you know collateral damage that may come from that nuclear meltdown is kind of prevented. Uh, let's just kill this freaking Spider-Man. He's been lurking up in the Rainstar for ages now. Um, so that is the, the first safety, safety precaution that we're going to be taking. The second safety precaution is the most awesome one, in my opinion. And what we are going to be doing is trying to stop the nuclear reactor going into meltdown when it starts to reach a, reach a critical temperature. And there is a machine that we can build to achieve that goal. And that machine is called a thermal monitor. And a thermal monitor looks a little something like this. If we have a look at the recipe, it is reinforced glass, an advanced circuit, and some redstone. Uh, and that is going to make for us a thermal monitor. So I want to get Get this thing built and i'm going to explain to you guys exactly how it freaking works and it is so freaking sweet man i've also spent the last half an hour or so gathering all of the materials that we require to get this nuclear reactor up and running as you can see this chest is completely full of them this chest is also full of materials and what i will say about nuclear power and feed the beast is that even though it requires a redonkulous amount of materials to get running it is actually not very difficult to build all the components required to make a nuclear reactor run in fact, it's pretty easy. You need a ridiculous amount of copper and a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of iron to get it done. But it's not like a really, really complicated mod pack where you need really advanced machines to create really complicated components. It's pretty easy to get a basic a reactor set up that is going to produce quite a lot of power for us, which is awesome. And, uh, you know, after playing Thormcraft, man, <laughs> this nuclear reactor jazz is like freaking child's play to me now man thorncraft was way more complicated than this is but it does require a ridiculous a ridiculous amount of material and a ridiculous amount of copper too so i have gone through a ton of copper to, to gather everything today but uh let's get cracking on making our thermal monitor we need an advanced circuit a bit of redstone and we're going to be making some advanced 
reinforced glass. Now, reinforced glass acts the same as reinforced stone, and it is basically the same uh, recipe. If we have a look at the recipe for reinforced stone, we need to surround an advanced alloy with stone. And to make an advanced alloy is really simple. You need to compress a mixed metal ingot. And as we know, to make a mixed metal ingot, you need a refined iron plate, a bronze plate, and a tin plate. And that's going to give you a mixed mi metal ingot. And to make these plates, you just need to shove these ingots into uh, a plate bending machine. So um, it wasn't too difficult to, to get all the materials required to make this advanced alloy. Um, of course, I didn't want to do it with you guys because it's freaking boring man it takes forever to make all of that jazz uh, but here is the recipe for reinforced glass as you can see also a very basic recipe let's just get the uh, the glass in like a, an H configuration like this get our advanced alloy in there and we will make a bit of reinforced glass like that we don't need to make a, a ton of it I do want to make like a window uh, of reinforced glass so that we can look into our nuclear reactor so that we can actually see the thermal monitor which we're going to build now so check it out guys thermal monitor oh man this is so freaking sweet I, I was so excited to show you show you guys this man um, i was researching how to make all of these things and how to make a stable nuclear reactor and as i did more research i just got more and more excited because it is so freaking cool man so here we go guys, the thermal monitor is now created and what we are going to be doing is in installing this thermal monitor directly onto our nuclear reactor. So let's put it in this slot over here, hold down shift and install it. And now you can see that this nuclear reactor, um, well this thermal monitor is monitoring the temperature of the nuclear reactor. And when the nuclear reactor reaches a certain temperature, we can send a redstone signal from the thermal monitor. So right now, that maximum temperature level is set at 500, but we can actually set this to whatever we want. And I do believe the meltdown point of a nuclear reactor is th is 8,000, I think. I, I don't actually know. I'm going to have to check up on that before we get our reactor running. But um, for the purposes of today's episode, we're going to set the, uh, the thermal monitor's um, threshold to zero. Uh, and that is basically now emitting a redstone signal. So say, for example, we set the thermal monitor's threshold to 8,000. When the nuclear reactor reached 8,000 degrees, it would actually um, make the thermal monitor send out a redstone signal. And we're going to be using that redstone signal to turn off the nuclear reactor. So that this is basically our, our kill switch over here, right? Right? If our nuclear reactor starts to overheat, the thermal monitor is going to actually switch it off and we're going we're gonna to make like a simple redstone switch to achieve that. Um, and then we all are also going to use something called an industrial alarm. So if the, the reactor core starts to melt down, an alarm is going to go off in the red star and we'll know that uh, we are a few seconds away from annihilation and we can quickly come and check what the jazz is going on with the reactor. But here we go guys, we've installed the thermal monitor. The next step is to install a redstone switch so that uh, we can make this thermal monitor work the way that we want it to. So what I've got over here is a couple of silver blocks and some silver covers. And what I want to do is like install a, I don't know, almost like a control panel over here. So I want each of the reactors to have like a little control panel. And I think I want to use a redstone torch as the activator for uh, our nuclear reactor. Nuclear reactors just need a redstone signal to be turned on. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is using this redstone torch to send the, a redstone signal via this red alloy wire into our nuclear reactor to turn it on. And then what we're going to be doing is sending a line of red alloy wire into this redstone uh, torch over here. So when the thermal monitor reaches its threshold, it's going to turn off the torch and thus kill the signal going into the nuclear reactor and thus turning off the nuclear reactor itself. So let's just get underground over here and we can actually make this redstone cable come around the corner like this. There we go. That's perfect. And then let's get the redstone cable running all the way along like so. And I think what we'll do is bring it to the back of the nuclear reactor like this. And I think we'll probably bring it up like that. Let's just neaten up this cable like so. Can we get up here? Now that there's cable... Oh yes, we can. Okay. So we... Alright, so now what we want to do is try and run this redstone... Uh, this 
well, this red alloy wire into the um, the nuclear reactor itself. We can't put the redstone wire into the bottom of the reactor because we need to have an outlet wire for the power that's going to be generated by the reactor. And what I want to do is send the power out the bottom of the reactor uh, into the MFSUs in the battery room over there. But we're going to do that in a moment. Let's just get the safety mechanisms installed uh, before we get any of that jazz done. I think what we still need to do though is make some more reinforced stone. So let's just make a bit of reinforced stone like this. Really, really easy to make. And we'll just make a bit of reinforced stone. I don't want to waste all of my advanced alloy because we do need that, that advanced alloy uh, for a lot of the nuclear uh, stuff that we're going to be building over the next few episodes. But check it out, guys. I'm going to put a, a block of reinforced stone like this. I guess we might as well just make it symmetrical like that. And then we can run our red alloy wire into our reactor like so and now the reactor is receiving a redstone signal which means that it is basically on so the reactor is now on right um it's not actually working because the, the way that we need the, to the way that we make a nuclear reactor work is by putting components inside of the nuclear reactor uh, which is of course our final goal to get this bad boy up and running However, the nuclear reactor is receiving a redstone signal now, so that part of the redstone switch is complete. The next part of the redstone switch is going to be um, from the thermal monitor itself. So let's run a, a bit of redstone cable down like that. Let's just uh, set the thermal monitor's temperature threshold to 100, so now it's not emitting a redstone signal. And then, let's just get down here, and let's have a look. All right, so we'll run the cable like this all the way underneath this platform over here. Oh, you jetpack, you are making me cray cray. There we go. Let's just get up into the chamber again. And then what we can do is run this red alloy wire into this uh, redstone torch block like this. Now, this is the switch that we are using to turn off our nuclear reactor. Now, let's let's test this bad boy out, right? Let's say the nuclear reactor starts to overheat and uh, it triggers the thermal monitor to turn on. That is going to send a redstone signal into this uh, red alloy wire cable, which is going to come into the redstone torch over here, which is going to turn off the redstone signal going into the reactor, thus turning off the reactor itself. So that is an absolutely awesome safety mechanism right there, guys. I'm very, very happy with that. And thanks to the CyberDogs out there who suggested this uh, this build. There were a couple of you guys who suggested doing it like this. So thank you very much for that. I'm just going to cover the shame of that cable like so. Um, and we could probably do the same on this side. What I will do is make like a nice little control panel over here. Uh, but the next step for, for safetifying our nuclear reactor chamber over here, guys, is to build a nice strong structure out of reinforced stone uh, walls over here. So I want to basically just build an entire chamber out of this. And I also want to add a little window to the front of this reinforced stone chamber uh, like this. So that, we actually, so that we can actually see the nuclear reactor. I mean, the, you know, the nuclear reactor is such a cool thing. I don't want to hide it. Uh, behind like a giant ass wall of reinforced stone. I do want to see it, man. It's, it's just so freaking sweet. Just get a couple torches up around here, though. Um, the sun is going freaking down right now. And yeah, there is some spawnage in the rain star at the moment. Um, but why don't we make this little reinforced window quite big like this, right? So we can see the whole, uh, we can see the whole reactor from when we're standing at the control panel over here. And I mean, how awesome is this, guys? This is just... Man, I love Feed the Beast so much. It just... I, I'm, it really feels to me like I'm making a spaceship right now. Like I'm making the... Like a dilithium chamber freaking reactor core spaceship right now, man. <laughs> it's just so awesome, man. Feed the Beast is just... the. Uh, it's just... It's the bee's knees, man. That's what it is. So check it out, right? We'll have like a nice solid wall over here. And <laughs> look at that, man. We're looking into a nuclear reactor. That is so sweet. And all we need to do now is finish this bad boy off. I'm going to have to make a, a, a bunch more reinforced stone, though, it looks like. Um, man, we only got... Oh, no. We got a ton left. I think I should probably just make a butt ton of this stuff, because we still have to make another whole nuclear reactor chamber over there. So let's just make, like, a couple stacks of this jazz. I do kind of want to have a door, though, to get into the chamber, right? We probably need a door, because if we need to adjust the... Um, if we need to adjust like the thermal monitor, for example, or adjust um, the, the components within the reactor itself, I think we, 
we probably do need to get into this chamber somehow. And we definitely need some lights up in here too. Right, let's just complete the chamber like this for now. I mean, what we're gonna eventually going to have to do, right, is have little factories that are going to produce the fuels and the cells and the components that the nuclear reactor requires to run. Uh, because we basically just want to be able to leave the nuclear reactor to run by itself. Uh, so we need to automate the entire process. But for now, I just want to see, you know, how, what we're working with once we have the entire I isolation chamber for the, the nuclear core built. Um, and there we go. It is now constructed. And let's have a look at what this looks like. Oh man, that is looking so sweet. <laughs> that just looks so awesome. Um, I think I've got a couple of... No, I don't have any lamps in here. Um, I think what we'll probably do is add like a door over here. We'll just add like a steel door or something over here, right? Because we do need to be able to access our nuclear reactor chamber. Um, there we go. We do need to get in here. Um, and yeah, I'm, like we definitely need to add some sweet ass lights around here too, right? Hmm. I think I've got some in this chest over here. Oh man, that is so awesome. That chamber is just looking so freaking sweet. Yeah, I've got I've got some inverted lamps over here that I that I collected when I took down the walls of this chamber. But check it out, man. That is looking badass. Damn. <laughs> oh, that is epic. Right. Well, we could just put one up there. That's pretty sweet. Like I was I was thinking either up there. Or in the corners, right? That's cute, but it is rough. Like that. Alright, there we go. That's fine for now. Um, but that, that just looks absolutely awesome. What we'll do is add a door over here. Um, Alright, so sweet. So now we can actually test out our switch, right? So let's increase the thermal monitor's threshold to 100. And as you can see, that um, has now turned on the nuclear reactor. But for now, for safety's sake, we're going to keep this nuclear reactor off, man. We don't want anything to explode, um, you know, without, our, without, without us knowing. But there we go, man. That is looking absolutely sweet. I think what we could do is probably just finish off the look over here, um, just so that it's nice and symmetrical. There we go. And the, the reactor is being held up by these reinforced stone blocks over here. So there's no physics fails going down. Um, and that is looking absolutely sweet. And now our nuclear reactor chamber is 100% safe, 100% secure. In case it does melt down and in case there is an explosion, this chamber of reinforced stone is going to absorb some of that explosion. And this thermal monitor over here is going to ensure that even if our nuclear reactor starts to overheat, it is going to get shut down by our redstone switch. And there we go, my cyber diggity dogs. We have successfully installed a nice, safe and secure reinforced chamber for our shiny new nuclear reactor. Reactor. In the next episode, we are going to start working on the component configuration required to get that nuclear reactor fired up. And we are also going to be plugging it into our MFSU battery system. So man, I cannot wait for the next episode, guys. Hope you have enjoyed this one. If you have, you hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, you hit the subscribe button. Things are getting nuclear up in here, man. And it is freaking sweet. This has been Ren Diggity Dog playing Minecraft Feed the Beast. We will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, everybody.